sports bell. We are back. Actively blowing into the microphone. It's all good. <laughs> awesome. It's all good. People expect nothing else. Yeah. I didn't know we were starting. And I was my coffee's hot. Okay, then. I'll just do it again. You can we can keep this. That's fine. Eh, I feel like it's we've gone too far. All right. I feel like I've already said let's do it again. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's all just right. plow through. All right. Yeah, here we are. The show's on. It is Sportsfeld. It is Sportsfeld. In all of its glory. I need to stop saying we're back off the top of the show. Well, we're so used to it. I think it's like ingrained in us because we used to take six weeks between episodes. That's probably it. So it's just like, oh, we're back. What a surprise. And it's like, oh, no, we're here. Because we have the opening. It's the same every time I say this is Sportsfeld. Yeah. Or it is built. Great opening, by the way. It is Sportsfeld. It is. Yeah. yeah. I say it every time. Yeah. And then. For like five years. As soon as I say that out loud. I realized that I, I haven't thought of a clever thing to say after that. I don't know if we need one. I mean, I talk about the weather nine times out of ten. So. No, we don't need one. But I take your point. In a hypothetical world that has not existed in years where somebody is listening to this show for the first time today. I mean. They would expect some sort of like, these two guys know each other well. They're gonna I would have. hope that somebody's listening to it for the first time today. One of these weeks, somebody should the show for the first time. <laughs> we will get that elusive extra eventually, listener someday. Eventually, someone's going to listen to this show for the first time again. Yeah. Or for the second time, the first time. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, the other half of the audience could come back at any, <laughs> any point. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, A little look under the hood there. I think the show is better than it was. It's absolutely better than it was. It's like significant. Not this specific part. No, no, but like the... If we're comparing it to like when we used to take six weeks off or even like two months ago, the show is better. Yeah. By like a large margin, especially like the old days. Oh, my God. I think that's true. The lo-fi. We are not one of those like indie bands where the lo-fi stuff was better. We are. We needed to go full studio major label. To Although people are, are still up. coming up to us, not up to us, but they still add us and be like, oh, man, I listened to this classic. Yeah, that's true. I mean, hey, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your time. Other than to listen to sports film. Yeah. Which you're currently doing. So Actually, what are we, should, what are we even bullying I should you say, for? I am going to tell you to do your time. Thank you for listening to the old episodes. What are we even bullying you for? Because you're already doing it. Yeah. Well, thanks, I guess. Lots going on. Yeah. Beer. Lots going on. It's a uh, Things. It's a big Wednesday in the world of sports. It's your birthday. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> not important. I mean. It's not a th- that's not a thing that's happening in sports. That's uh, true. I mean, vicariously, I suppose it is. We're sticking to it. But directly, it's not. Sticking to sports. Your boys and your boys in mind. Your boars, the boars out there. That'd be a that'd be a way more interesting sport. Off to a hot start. Boars. Off to a hot start. Boars all day. Uh, your boys in mind. The Reds. Toronto FC has a East final game tonight. East final, yeah, in Atlanta, in the Goatsy Stadium. It's quite literally Game Seven of the World Series. Yep. Which sure. Crazy. Well, I think we're in our, into our third, second, or third week of the NBA season. Second. Right. It started like a, like eight days ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh hockey rolls on maple Leafs, same story same song different tune yeah it's getting hard to um really have anything new to say about that team other than that i've chained my tune a little bit from last week okay and that last week was like maybe they should fire mike babcock and now i'm fully just like they should probably fire mike babcock. wow heat off the top buried it two and a half minutes in but there it is yeah had to get a take in somewhere might be the hottest take of the day maybe probably i don't have anything hotter than that no, I was going to suggest we re, re, we re rank who we think will make the playoffs in the NBA. I like that because I don't know that we ever. That's did, still hot. I don't know that we ever did that last time. We didn't. Also, we spent hours on Friday drunk talking about it. So. Yes, I will. That was going to be the lead into the segment, which we will get to in a moment. I spoiled it. That's fine. All right. There's no. There's no. Nobody comes here for really the, like, batting a thousand here. Nobody That's comes here for the well organized segments. No. Like, oh, I mean, these guys really flow this show up together. No. Even Cassie yesterday was like, "Oh yeah, you guys are going to talk about sports. That's what people listen to you for, right?" And Ouch. So, so in a way, I'm like, yeah, but she. I mean, like, Blake's not here, so just because their show's good <laughs> doesn't give them any right. <laughs> And organize and has a plan every time. Excuse us Whatever. for barely trying until we get here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's enough goofing. We have one piece of business to get to before we get to all that. Yes. It's our final week with Blood Brothers. It's been a whole month already. Crazy. October seems October simultaneously seems to have flown by and also just crawled. October dragged ass IMO. Uh we remember our time finally together. Yeah. Us and Blood Brothers. It's not goodbye. It's see you later. I will miss Blood Brothers until I inevitably have one on like Friday. On Friday. Yeah. It feels like we traveled the world with their fun. Fo- Man, we let Clay write this today. He came <laughs> it's just not good. It's just no one talks like this in real life. 
<laughs> what is this? <laughs> you tell but like they did not send this ad read over. <laughs> this is clearly Clay. Look, look at the eyes and fine. Uh, <laughs> we're ending it off with a sour ale, or as Clay would write down, a soul ale. Which he then claimed, tried to claimed us, was correct. Tried to convince us it's a soul ale, which is not a thing. No. Uh, we're drinking the Paradise Lost. It's a guava soul ale. Uh, big apricot aroma is how they describe it. Big apricot aroma. Tart and extremely juicy in parentheses here, just like Zoob's. Uh, the Blood Brothers Bottle Shop. It's 165 Geary Avenue, seven days a week from 12 noon till 11 p.m. If you can't make it to the shop, hypothetically, you're at home listening to this show on your mobile device through a speaker. And you say, I want to drink that. But I don't want to leave my house. Just like me uh, every day except for Wednesdays when I come here. <laughs> you just go to www.bloodbrothersbrewing.com. And you can get basically dial a bottle, which we talked about last week. Yeah. Uh, Here's the thing. It's I, not called dial a bottle. It's called the home delivery. Home de- it's just delivery. Yeah. My thing is that we've been debating now for like, seems like three weeks about sure. when to pour and how to do it. I realize I can just do it while you're doing the read. And that's it saves so much time. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. I should have done this weeks ago. Whoops. Poor sip remark, it says. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a Paradise Lost, a sour ale. This so, is one of your favorites, isn't it? I believe it is. I love it. You know, I love exactly one sour. Yes. So now we sip. Uh, now we sip and we remark according to the sheet. It's quite good. That is delicious. Apricot, which uh, Clay also spelled wrong. <laughs> really? How do you spell There's it? no way that's how you spell apricot. There's, got, there's an I in there somewhere. The ha- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apricot. Apricot, uh, apricot. Right? If we're wrong about this one, though, it cancels up. Feel bad. Soul, which is Clay taking a beating here off this off this promo, trying to hold the yeah, place together no, by yeah, himself. It's... it's <laughs> It's for sure an I. <laughs> Sean deals with the biggest moment of his entire life, and Clay runs the shop by himself. Yeah. Yeah. Got to shit on him for his poor copywriting. 100% it's apricot. With apricot. An with an I. Of course. Yeah. We digress. <laughs> uh, NBA season, I think, was what we agreed with we, we wanted to talk about first. Yeah, I think it's the most, despite it being games in the World Series, I think the most interesting thing. What can you say about the World Series other than it's over soon? Yeah, and I don't like other teams. So Very good chance of listening to this, it's already over. People almost, almost like, yeah, say about be- half. better than average. For sure. about half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, <sighs> NBA season, I will say, uh, to start, Pascal Sackham is better than I expected. Yeah, all of those, I had high expectations. Any of those concerns I voiced a week ago of like, mm, we'll see, are gone. I listen, you know me, I listen to other podcasts. Yes, I've heard. Uh, listening was listening to a major basketball podcast the other day. Oh, can you, you can't name it. I won't. Yeah. They don't need the press. They're fucking, it's like the number one podcast in the world. Oh, okay. Uh, and, a, and a host who is, I'll say this, notoriously Celtics friendly. How about that? Oh, yes. I see what you're talking about. Begrudgingly saying. Big mystery. There's a good chance that Pascal Siakam gets MVP votes this year. Wow. Has him, as, has him currently as second team all NBA. I mean. Which is a top 10 player in the NBA. I mean, if, yeah, well, if he's, he's putting them fucking 30 and 17 every night, I would hope so. But even if but, the, the, the point was made, even if he slips, if he finishes between 25 and 27 points a game, you're still talking about an elite defensive player. Yep. An elite transition player. Mm-hmm. And somebody who every year now for three, four years has added whatever the weakness was in his game. He has made that a strength. And also the NBA loves its recontextualizing MVP votes around what's happening in the league. Mm-hmm. If after all the noise and all the discussion about Kawhi leaving and the Raptors being a weak title winner and blah, 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 blah. If not saying they repeat, obviously, but if he can lead them to a two seed in the East, you got to think about it. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think he will or should necessarily win sure. MVP, but votes. Oh yeah, I could see it. I like it. It's not crazy. I like this. I like this. at Pascal Siakam MVP. He's been really good. He's been insanely good. What and can you even say? To your point about the defense, it's been on the whole for the Raptors. Like re- regardless of what you want to say about, you know, maybe they don't have that last second shot career guy, which Pascal is it's open for debate. But uh the defense has been pretty nice. Uh our friend of the show and and friend of our person, Alex Wong, sort of had a exciting but depressing thought that like if you bring the 2019, 2020 Kawhi back to this team, they are like runaway title favorites. Oh, yeah. Like absurd. And because that would also mean plus Danny Green. Even without Danny Green. I, he put that in there, but like they don't even need him, frankly. No. Oh, if, you're, if your starting five is Kyle, 
you know, o, o, this OG Kawhi, this Pascal, and doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's absurd. Yeah, that team is so good. Oh my god. Anyway, fucking Paul George. Because Kawhi has looked excellent. Yeah, the Clippers are. Kawhi is suddenly like, oh, now I'm a great passer. Also. Yeah, he does those. Uh, to your point about Pascal finding the hole, I mean, like there it's filled. I mean, obviously Kawhi can because he's probably the best basketball player on the planet. Sure seems that way. He, yeah, he's uh the Clippers are really good, but I do. Kawhi's added that Steve Nash pass where it's looks like he's just dribbling again and it's a bounce pass. Yep. The West is tough though. Like the Clippers are probably the best team on paper. Over the and course of the, the week, court. you've slowly had to be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was definitely like, oh, adamantly. Fuck. I'm still like, fuck them. But <laughs> for sure. I, my concern for them is uh, I don't think I don't think Kawhi has to be load managed by any means because he's healthy now. He's shown that he can do he can play two months straight and it's fine. But the West is tough. There's a lot of beat em up games in that conference this year. And someone's got to come over it and it's probably going to be the most talented team, which is probably the Clippers. Mm-hmm. But I think their road is tougher than people looking at the first week is may are maybe suggesting like I've seen a bunch of takes out there being like, Oh, the clip, the West is the Clippers. No, no questions asked. And I don't think it's that cut and dry yet. Okay. And I don't think it's going to be, cause I think the West is like there. Anthony Davis looked fucking unreal last night. And like Denver's really good. Uh, Portland, I think is going to be really good. Like it's just, it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be tougher than you love. Portland. People think. I do. I really want Portland to be good. <laughs> it's too much. Just on white side for me. I get that. Can't watch that. I do get that. I also don't like Hassan Whiteside, but I don't know. Blake Murphy, by the way, said too many times on Friday that he, that Hassan Whiteside is a Raptors target, hypothetically. not. I don't, I don't like to hear that. I get it. This is all born out of, we went, we were out on Friday drinking Blood Brothers yep. at the bar. And Quite literally, yeah. We Basically, we waited until Blake got there, and then it was like, okay, Blake's here. We're going to talk about the NBA for three and a half hours. And then Melissa and Cassie just talked amongst <laughs> themselves. We left that bar at 2.40 a.m. <laughs> after having talked about literally every team in the NBA. Yeah. I At one point, at like 2.20, I was like, who haven't we talked about? The Magic? And then we talked about the Magic. Jonathan Isaac. The thing about We're pretty good. Portland okay. is Nurkic is still up. Yes. That's it. That's my point. Mm. They're good already. I and see. you add one of those unicorn guys to the team and it's like, mm. okay. So I'll ask, I'll ask you to make some categorizations here. Okie dokie. A week in, not that, not that enough has happened a week in uh, for it to be a huge reevaluation. No, sort of I mean, thing. there's nothing definitive after four games. It is what it is. But is there anything you've seen this year that I'm going to give you two categories here? That you already am like, okay, this one team is worse than I thought they were going to be. And this other team is better than I thought they were going to be. Uh, Yeah. I'll eat a bit of crow. And I think the Sixers are probably better than I thought they were going to be. They can defend just about anybody. Yeah. Very I still long. don't think they can shoot. And I still don't have much faith in them in a playoff series because they can't shoot. But as the Raptors showed last year, if you can have a sick lockdown defense when you absolutely need it in the final two minutes, you can do a lot of things. Uh, so I think they're probably better than I thought. Uh, we talked about this a lot on Friday. The Bucks maybe. The Bucks were going to be my. I don't think they're that good. Aren't aren't great. I mean, we'll see if they beat the Raptors by forty on Saturday. Maybe mm-hmm. I feel differently, but it's it's the double of like I think Brogdon was important. Yep, and I think because. Brogdon was important because when he came in, you had to put like your third or fourth best defender on him. Yeah, and now in Indiana, he looks terrible because he's the number one. He might look better when Depot comes back, but yes, if and when, if and when, yeah. I think the team that I am, uh, that I think preseason, I was like, didn't really think about it all, and now that I've seen some games ago, they're going to be tough every day. Is Miami Heat not a fun team to play against? Yeah, speaking, they did beat they beat the Bucks in overtime on the weekends. So. Not a fun team to play against. Ever. No, love Tyler Harrow, and they have the picks and the contracts. They're get, they're getting somebody. They're going to trade for somebody. I That's don't know who it is. It could be Mark Gasol. Uh, I don't think it will be because I big old shrug. I'm still on. I'm absolutely still on team. The Raptors aren't trading anybody this year, but especially if they keep looking like this, I think they're going to trade a big man. I I get it. I think I don't see the purpose if it's just for picks though, Mm. because they already have 20 of those guys. Like, yes, it does seem like they can turn sort of anything into 
you give Messiah a 23rd overall pick, you better look out. Yeah, like that's a fifth for most teams, I think. But I don't see the purpose of trading a big man unless you're trading to Miami and you're getting a Justice Winslow type. Right. Or to whomever and getting a – like I just don't see why – the Raptors are going to be a home court in the first round team. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty clear at this point, even though it's only been four games. I'm going to putting that down now as a <clears throat> Jake's take. Sure. But so I just don't see the purpose of trading one of those, unless it turns out that Marcus all is like maybe actually washed. Right. Which I'm not. I think he's confident. I, in. No, I think he just needs to go sit in a tub for. But he is weeks. Uh, aged. Mm-hmm. He is experienced. I can see why a, a team needing that extra piece, not unlike the 2019 Raptors. 100 percent. Uh, good. I also think, t- based on reevaluating teams, fuck. What? I didn't want to do this, but I'm gonna have to do it. Do it. It's this thing about you know the, the reality and what we talk about. Marcus all being washed. And I was like, I wonder how old he is. Oh, he's exactly your age. Yeah. 30, 34. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the same age as you. That's right. That you just turned. Yeah. That's yeah. what 34 is. 34 is looking up athletes <laughs> that are toast, that are done, that are dead in the water, and like, oh, that's my age. Cool. <laughs> Oh, I also wouldn't pick me to be the center on the team. So yeah, that's fair. What about Norm Powell? Norm Powell is the guy that I look at and go, you could you could trade Norm Powell. Yeah, he's. he's I think we know what Norm Powell is. I think I'm done coming into a year and saying this is the year Norm Powell gets a lot better. Yes, I think so. I think expecting Norm to take the sort of leap that we are hoping and maybe seeing that OG is taking. I think his time for that has passed. I do think Norm fits well on this team. He's never going to get the usage to me to to, yeah. to have that. Right, he's never going to be the number one guy. I, no, I think Norm is a great like seventh guy on your team, think, maybe eighth. I think you could. I think you could. And this is to, to your point. As always, Blake. Blake's idea was, well, what if you started Norm Powell for ten games, and then we're like, oh, Norm Powell's a starting shooting guard in the league. Take. Yeah, I mean they're going to have to do that when they have to sit Kyle down for a bit because it's just going. It's going to happen. Not saying, just saying. He's also thirty four. So. <laughs> But uh, Norm, Norm, I find interesting because to what we were saying before, like, yeah, I mean, obviously the Raptors are better if Kawhi is here, Mm -hmm. as we were just saying. But like Norm is the guy you take out of that starting five if he's if Kawhi is there. For sure. And so it's just I think Norm's an interesting case because he's a guy who can sort of float in and out of lineups and play the minutes you do and kill the Bucks, which is always fun. But I I don't I agree with you. I don't think we're going to see more from Norm. I think we know Norm Powell. He's making what ten, ten plus million, something like that. Yeah. Twelve, I think. Um, you could add that. You could add that with. You could package that with somebody else and get a twenty-five million. If that's what you wanted to do, yes, I would say this. I don't think they do. I think they want to keep their max cap space open because they're getting Giannis. They're getting Giannis right in two years. Yeah. yeah. Here's the. Here's what I would say though. I love how I it's would, become. There's a report this morning that they're going to be. It was. It was dreamer thing, and then it was inside joke, and now it's like, oh, literally, that's the leading team. That's the plan. Yeah. Unless they win the title, they're going to come to Toronto. I think so. Even then. Uh, I will say on Norm, I would, as a fan from where I'm sitting, I would rather they trade Norm than trade one of the big guys. I would agree. I don't know that they have the, I'm not suddenly like, oh, great. Uh, Gasol's out of the way now. Chris Boucher can be a regular. Yeah, I'm not excited about that. I think you can trade Norm and whatever you get back will fill in what you need. Yeah, the amount like, of I don't guys. Think, I don't think that's, this team is not making or breaking on Norm Powell. Terrence Davis, Pat McCaw, there's, there's guys... Malcolm Miller, like you can, yeah. you can replace what Norm does. Exactly. And I would, even though he, to a degree, we were just saying maybe he's, you know, washed because he's 34. I would rather have Marcus all with us in another playoff run than yeah. not. I don't think that's crazy. Okay. Let's quickly do this before we go to break. Let's just reevaluating after a week. Okay. Give me your eight playoff teams in the East and the West. Okay. Let me, eight playoff teams in the East. And the, okay. So we'll start with these Philly. Yes. Are we doing this in order or just eight teams? Uh, just eight teams. Okay. We'll, we'll try to do it in order as best we can. Okay. Work, Philly, work from the top down. Philly. Yes. Toronto. Yes. Milwaukee. Yes. Miami. Yes. Begrudgingly, the Celtics, though I don't think they're very good. Only because the rest of the, the conference is not that good. Yeah. Uh, A lot of fraud. Man, after, after those first five, it's pretty dire. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think the Hawks are as good as Trey Young is looking. Yeah. Like, and now he's knocked up, knocked down, or okay. he's got an injury. If I, I say, if I say, I think Orlando was probably in this mix. Probably, maybe Detroit, maybe Brooklyn. If you had to pick, if you had to pick two of those. You're down to because we're going to put Orlando in. Yeah, not so, as a six seed, but they're going to get in. So between Detroit, Brooklyn, and Atlanta, probably Detroit and Brooklyn. 
Yeah, that's fair. Brooklyn's just good enough. Yeah, the Wizards are bad. Cleveland's bad. Charlotte's bad. The Knicks are bad. The Bulls are bad. The Pacers are probably bad. Kyrie shit has already started, eh? Yeah. It's already like, oh, oh, it's like, oh yeah, Kyrie, right? Of course. Oh, exactly this. Cool. <laughs> okay. I will. S- the Pacers are the big question mark. Pacers suck. If D- if Old Debo comes back. <laughs> no, but if Old Debo I was be- so high on the Pacers like <laughs> three weeks ago. But it could be the exact same thing as the Pacers are every. Them. It's the True. same thing they are every year. They're shitty for, at, to start. Then Old Debo goes off and they win enough games to get the sixth seed. I wonder. It's been. It, I wonder if it's, if, if it's one too many times where Oladipo is tasked with coming back from injury. Feels like we're getting into like he's been doing this a lot. It's true. Uh, the West, Clippers, yes. Lakers, yes. Nuggets, mm-hmm. Jazz. Jazz. I'm, I'm not as high on the Jazz as Me people. either, man. People love the I'm Jazz. I'm not as high on the Jazz. Um, it makes me feel dumb. I mean, it makes me feel like I must be wrong. Yeah, Because totally. everyone's smarter than me in saying it. But I, the people are like, oh, they're a lock to be a top three seed. They're a lock to be a playoff pro- problems. Like, I don't man, see, Mike Conley looks like garbage. I don't see it. They should have kept Ricky Rubio. Rockets are getting in. Love, man, them. Man, Love them or I hate them. They're getting in. Man, they are getting in. Man, boy, is that not a fun team to watch this year. Um, oh, my God. Uh, funny that neither of us are putting the two 3-0 and o teams in the playoffs. The Spurs are going to get in. They all, they as much always, as I was like, I talked a lot of shit about the Spurs on the weekend. You did because they're just like not fun to watch. I don't like, I don't like Lamarcus Aldridge. I don't, I don't feel anything about him. But they just have done it again. Dejounte Murray is probably the best guard defender in the league. He's so good. Um, the Timberwolves are not making the playoffs. I don't I'm calling so that right either. now. They might get, they might sniff it. What are we at? Six. We are at six. Portland. Here's my, here's my big one that I, I said on Friday. Golden State's missing the playoffs. Golden State is not making the playoffs. They look terrible. They are so bad defensively, and they're going to trade D'Angelo Russell. And now that Clay is out for the year. They're fucked. Bla- your Blazers. Blazers. That's and we seven. Want, we need one more. Now, here's the here's the thing, right? I want to name off four teams that could easily make it. So it's Dallas. Mavs look very fun. They do look very fun. Mavs look fun. We get Timberwolves. We get the Thunder, who are right there. Um, I don't think the Thunder are going to be there. Pellies? Yet. The Pellies, again, it's if Zion, when Zion comes back, how do they look? They are not. I mean, I know they're missing their guy. I think I like the Mavs for eight. I think I do, too. I know the Pellies are missing their guy, but like as a team that everyone was like, they're going to surprise people. Man, they don't look good. Luca is exactly w- where you want him to be in his second yeah. year. I think I think I'm going to. I think I'm also going to say the Mavs, and I think the Mavs could be that like low seed problem team only because the talent on the floor. I would want to play him. Yeah. What do you do in a high screen with Doncic and Porzingis? Exactly, and like, you want to go against. Everyone talks in the NBA about how the team with the be- the team with the best player wins. You want to go against those two guys in a playoff series? That seems. Not fun. We're throwing our support. We're low. We're low key Mavs guys. Mm, I wouldn't go that far. Okay, I'll be a low key Mavs guy. Okay, I do like Luca though. You gotta love Luca. Luca's great. I love that he came in, and we'll get to, we'll, we'll talk about other stuff in a minute here. But I love that he came in to the league, and he was like, "Oh, I'm already a basketball star. <laughs> I've already been the best player in the <laughs> yeah. league. It's not even like it's not that hard. It's, it's easy for me. It's the Matt Thomas role. And he got he got better, which is good to see. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. Come back. We got so much more to talk. We got everything else to talk about. Sports are back, baby. Every other sport in the world. Uh, we're gonna get to those after this. We are back. It is. You know, you're not supposed to say we are back when you come back from commercials on the radio. Yeah. No, like, really. Because they didn't go anywhere. Because who goes true. somewhere during a break on a podcast? There's nowhere to go. That's true. It's like and we didn't go. Anywhere. Our break is like two seconds. So. Well, but I already said it. So there you go. I don't like that. My beer and coffee are in the same kind of cup because mm. I keep reaching for one thing. It's the other. I'd see. I finished it and then double cupped it. That's smart. Yeah. I just I, I, I don't know. Yeah. That's what people want. Anyway, uh, we briefly talked about what we should talk about next. Mm-hmm. I think we agreed it was the Reds. The Reds. Your Reds. Our Reds. Our Reds. Jake, give me a quick give me a quick preview because they are facing dot 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 Atlanta United. There you go. In the toughest building in the entire Yes, in the goats, in the stadium that looks like an opening asshole. Um sure. When it opens the roof, it looks like someone opening an asshole. Okay. Um don't pour in the coffee. See? Uh yeah. Reds play Atlanta United tonight in the East Eastern Conference final. Do we expect Altador? Uh, I don't actually know. I know that he's back to practicing. It wouldn't shock me if he's off. Like if he, I, he'll. I think he'll be on the roster. And his tart. <laughs> I think he'll be on the roster. Whether or not he starts, I don't know. I also don't think there's any harm in you know if he can't go a full ninety, bring having him as a sub in the seventieth if you really need a goal. 
Uh, they've looked pretty good without him, I would say. There seems to be a lot more room for, just because his style of play is very like big and tough and holding up the ball and everything. And you take him out, it allows Puzzwell a little more room to sort of put him up top and he's sort of creating a little more. Not to say they're better without him because they're absolutely not. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Omar Gonzalez should be back though, which uh, is a huge boost because they're, I know that their goals against average, which I know is a hockey stat, but you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, is significantly lower with him on the pitch. I believe it's some, I'm going to get these numbers wrong, but it's something like it was 1.8 when he without him and 1.1 with him or something like that. So I think that especially against a team that is as talented as Atlanta is and as a firepower as Atlanta can be. Joseph Martinez. Joseph Martinez. I think uh, having Omar Gonzalez on the pitch will help a lot. There you go. And so that's my hope. And uh, I don't think they're going to win, but I hope they do. But you said that every game so far in the playoffs, pretty much. Mm. You didn't think they were going to beat NYCFC. No, I didn't. But I also didn't take into account that it was at fucking City Field and garbage. That was bad. And also the pendulous nuts. I would also say that Alejandro the, Pozuelo. the two goals that they scored, one was an absolute unbelievable, gift. unbelievable. That first goal. And then the second one was, I mean, great play by Richard Larea to get the penalty drawn. And then also a great penalty by Pozuelo to have the stones to Paneca somebody in the 88th minute in the playoffs. But, uh, although he is three for three doing that. So who knows? If it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Exactly. But, uh, I didn't, I don't know. Atlanta playing in that building is really tough. It's 70,000 people. Like they fill that fucking thing. Do you do the old try to get a draw sort of thing? No, because we suck at penalties. I think they got it. They have to, I think you, I think you do the try to get one in like the 25th and then sit the fuck back for 65. But here's hoping. We believe in Vanny. No, <laughs> Not really. I didn't like he's a guy been, who is who has directed he, them to possibly three finals in four years. He has been much better this year. He made some in the one year they didn't make that final. He made some questionable calls last year, but uh, I do like he looks. He always looks great. That scarf last week was top notch. OK, uh, yeah, so, I so uh, to watch there. I hope they win. I you, really hope they win. You will watch that, obviously. Yeah, I over, will. over a Raptors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a midseason versus Detroit. Yeah. Never beaten Dwayne Casey. I will say the last time the Raptors played Detroit on a Wednesday, the same night as a big TFC game, was one of the best Toronto sports nights in recent memory. Okay. TFC beats Tigress, I believe. Oh boy, in yeah. Champions League, that was and wild. That was the same night as Demar dunked on Anthony Tolliver uh, with four seconds to go in the game. Wow! So I feel like an ancient history. Does Demar <laughs> playing the Raptors? It's like a year and a half ago. Crazy. That's something to watch for tonight. Yeah. And or something that you watched yesterday and can laugh at how right and or wrong Jake was. Correct. Um, usually wrong very interesting the FC the FC we also have game seven of the world series tonight yeah Scherzer, doesn't really feel like Scherzer Grinky. sure doesn't feel like it's a uh, game seven of the world series day does it um yeah it does not it is not it, it, as somebody who enjoys baseball and who puts it on frankly I've been to be to be 100% honest with you to, to cop to what's been happening is I've been turning these games on in the seventh inning because, because other stuff is on from seven to nine thirty yeah I absolutely correct and it takes four hours to play the game and also you tune in every it's always us two one every time and also fuck both these teams yeah which i think that like not that i was big into like astros dodgers last year either sure. but it doesn't there it's real hard to get me excited about these teams so you get max scherzer on one end which is great uh he's nuts yep and you get zach Greinke, the big the big trade deadline edition on the other which I guess from a trade, it's what you want. Yeah. That's why you get him. It's foolhardy to try to predict one game of baseball. Yes. Foolish. Any, literally anything could happen. They could lose, either team could win 15-1. I'm going to say that Houston's going to win only because it seems like we live in a world where the worst people have the best things happen. Feels like Houston's going to win. But I, I, again, Max. I also thought they were going to win last night. Max Scherzer could throw 130 pitches and throw a shot. I was convinced Houston was going to win four straight and Me win too. the whole thing. I had text where I was like, Houston's winning tonight, right? And yeah. the person was like, absolutely. Uh, very good lineup, but again, but bad people get rewarded all the time. In it's this one world, game. So. It's one game. We don't know. Yeah, I want. I will say, not a great preview. As me. someone who <laughs> has been on this show on record you on have, air, yeah. saying fuck the Washington Nationals for reasons beyond any of their own control. See, I think you, I thought you would love the Nationals for stealing the team from Montreal. I mean, I I do, but and then making Expos fans mad. But all the Expos fans didn't get mad. They take they're claiming as their own. That's why it's dumb. They took your team. It's because they're pathetic. I know they're so bad. <laughs> I fucking talk with Tim Raines for a couple of hours. Um, but I will say Washington 
A, the Astros have done a really good job of making it really easy to hate them, mm-hmm. as we've been over. Mm-hmm. And Nationals fans just boo the shit out of Trump. So th- they've they've done a good job of making a team I don't care about quite well. And Juan Soto was dope. And they do the baby shark thing. Which, a song I've still never heard in my life. And they dance after home runs, which you gotta like. That's fun. I do like that. So we hope it's the Nationals. If it's not, so be it. Yeah, I'm not gonna get worked up one way or the other. Big Tony run done. Playing well. Uh, what else we got? What else on the docket? Leafs are bad. Leafs, same old story. Yeah. Uh, Maybe when you're like first or second best player isn't playing, you struggle. Over the last 82 games, they're an 87 point team. Does that concern you? Not really. That's not a playoff team. Isn't it? 87 points is not even close. Really? That's Man, the angel has changed. It's like 11 points shy. Huh. That's not true. Oh, yeah. 11 points is too many. But I take your point. Uh, uh, I mean, what's not, the rate here? Let me get this. They'd have been, yeah, no, 11 points shy. Okay. Yeah, no, it doesn't concern me because of exactly what we talked about last week. You know, their, their lack of success, let's say, in the back half of last year, I think was pretty clear that they're coasting. And this year, I think they're trying to get their coach fired. Okay. They've also had an interesting... Uh, schedule not yeah and you don't want to blame the schedule makers it is what it is um yeah what can you do you get what you get i think it is i will say the thing about this leaf team is it does feel like other than the babcock stuff it does feel like it has been the same talking point since february yes it has not necessarily like record wise but just like this the product that is on the ice is exactly who they we thought they were but slightly worse i think ovechkin's point where he came out and said this week the leafs need to play a different style. they need to play differently if they want to be contenders i think that's absolutely correct yeah and he would know yeah they're just they you hear it a lot or i've heard it a lot um watching uh my spurs Mm -hmm. this year who are also struggling and you hear a lot about how they have no tactical identity and it's just sort of you know, play across into the box and hope someone fucking gets a head on it and play bad defense is kind of what the year sounds, is. Sounds familiar. Kind of what the year's been. And the, the Leafs, I also think, have no tactical identity. They rely a lot on the special teams, which without Tavares are understandably struggling. And they're just kind of there. You know what I mean? Like there's no. Yeah. One of their, they have so much talent that one of them will do something sick as hell in any given time and be like, oh, wow, that was sick as hell. But like as a team, They're just kind of on the ice. The Maple Leafs, one of the things that is like, I think we're both in this way, where is you want to temper yourself to not be a radio caller. Yeah. You don't want to be like, oh, they need to be tougher or they need to do, they need to to play. I know. I'm not even saying they need to be tougher. They seem to do something. No, I know. And it's like, oh, they need to play harder. And it's like, it's, it's so hard to talk about the team without slipping into those things. Because you watch it and you're like, just fucking try more. That's it. Yeah. Right? Care a little. It's like, it's not even... Maybe they don't. I don't think they need to hit people. I don't think they need to be right. tough. They just need to show some sort of fucking... I don't want to use the word spirit, because exactly your point. It sounds like a fucking exactly Leafs right. guy. 100%. But exactly like, right. man, they just don't look interested in being there. It's not... It hasn't been a fun year to watch, even when they win. They're bo- And they're boring. For a team with like five of the most skilled guys in the world, they are boring. Yeah, they got Dermot back. That's good. Tavares coming back soon. Yeah. And they finally have some days off. They finally have some. They finally have some days off. So we'll see how that changes things. They finally have some days off coming up. They need some. They need a goddamn identity. They also have like the schedule is finally like they play Philly twice in the next three games. Yeah, and then they play uh, Chicago and they play the Islanders. So like five of the next six games are very winnable games where they don't have to be a hundred percent all the time. That's true. It's just I don't know. It seems with Vegas in there somewhere, and I don't mean to harp on the backup goalie thing but man he's played twice against montreal and against boston and Not tampa great. and Not great. <sighs> anyway anyway we are, it's so hard in this it's so I hard know. to be a leafs fan and like not care because it's october and then be like god they make me so angry they suck it sucks yeah anyway you know you fight all year long you have to fight all year yeah there's not going to be many easy games, it doesn't feel like. The concern really is that they're digging the hole early. And then when yeah. it actually matters in March, they're not going to be able to. I mean, they've maintained they are still third. It's a, way too early for standings. For sure. But you know what I mean. Absolutely. They're, they're going to be on. They're going to be a cusp team all year long. It's one thing to dig yourself that hole in February when you don't give a shit. But like doing it now seems dangerous. Anyway, they're through that hard October. October was tough. and They're, they're through it. 
Uh, I think that's it. I think so. I don't have any other thoughts. Do you have any other thoughts? Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I listen, there, are man. there other sports? Uh, Apparently, the Wolfpack signed a guy who's really good. Wolfpack signed a, uh, uh, an all black. I think so. Yeah. Cool. I'm actually. I will say. Bianca fucked her knee up. That's Bianca fucked her knee up. That sucks. I will say I'm quite excited for rugby season. Super League. Look at you. Yeah. I got a rugby game on my phone. I play. It's got oh, me all, all jacked up to watch some rugby. I like a phone game to get you through it. Love to sit on the couch and not pay attention to the show I've seen a hundred times. Good stuff. Okay. See, this is this is the the phone the TV pranks. You're playing your rugby game. I change the channel and get up. It would take you a minute to even realize the channel had been changed. Yeah, that's actually probably true. See? Fair enough. There we go. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, nothing left to do. No, nothing left to do. Plenty left to do. Bunch left to do. So much left to do. You made it through the part where we talk about sports at, like at three-quarter effort. Yeah. Now it's time for the part where we really think about. We're like the Leafs just cruising, baby. Which is the That's exactly right. <laughs> we are like the Leafs. Take our word for it. We're talented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On paper. <laughs> Based on our younger years. Um, yeah, match of the week, song of the week. Does this freak you out? And the mailbag is after this. Match of the week, song of the week, and the mailbag is here. Jake, before we do song of the week, What's up? talk about your show. Speaking of songs of the week. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I am once again going to hop on the coattails of a friend and do a show with someone who's better at it than me. Um, I, me and Blake uh, have started a show called Columbia House Party under our lovely friends at the Stringer Pod, uh, Stringer Podcast label, I guess. The sure. label? Network? Network. Stringer Podcast Network. Great promo. Um, yeah, it's called Columbia House Party. We're going to talk about a different album every week and go... A little deep dive into it, do historical context, personal context, going to do song rankings, discography rankings, all that debate stuff that you listen to me for or follow. I, have you ever liked any of my ramblings on Twitter? It's basically just that, but longer and in a show. Uh, and Blake is also there, so it might be good. Uh, but yeah, you should check it out. Uh, we launch, I believe, on Monday. It was the first episode. Uh, there's a little teaser episode out right now but yeah you can subscribe and follow and whatnot uh, i believe it's columbia hp on twitter uh i think instagram is full columbia house party and columbia house party on itunes spotify whatever else podcasts do now my fiance had a question okay about the show that i couldn't fully answer all right what is it melissa uh is it just going to be uh like the song the emo and pop punk yeah is it no. the, just the albums that you guys like no, just, she said it's just going to be Jake music. No, so so <laughs> <laughs> no, crazy. so our sort of gimmick idea was that every album we talk about connects to the one after. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we did a Blink One Eighty Two album next, we could do uh, Travis Barker's hip hop album, and mm -hmm. then we could do Lil Wayne and et cetera, oh et cetera, et cetera. So, as long as we're we're finding sort of the connections between, which will kind of take us on our journey. Which I think it's safe to say that like a majority of it will be. Of course. Jake and Blake music, just because that's what we know and that's what we're comfortable in, uh, especially right off the top. It definitely is. But uh, by episode four, we have the first few mapped out now. I think by episode four, we go off off the path a bit. Uh, and my hope personally is that there'll occasionally be albums where one of us has never listened to it Ooh. before. So we can talk about what it's like coming into a potentially classic, quote unquote, album in 2019 with fresh eyes. Cool. Um, but no, it will not be entirely Jake and Blake music. Great answer. Yeah. Speaking of Jake music, what's the song of the week? Uh, my song of the week is actually not a song. Huh. I want to talk about the movie Parasite because it fucking kicks ass <laughs> and everyone should go see it. And I've been thinking about nothing else since I saw it on Sunday night. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm. It's a cheat and I don't care because it's my show so I can do what I Doesn't want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go see the movie Parasite. It's one of the best things. I've Definitely the best thing I've seen this year so far. Granted, there's a bunch I have not seen. Say you're someone but, like me who has never heard of this movie. Um, that's the best way to do it. I knew absolutely nothing about it going in except who made it. Okay. Uh, it's a Korean film. Oh, boy. Uh, the less you know, the better. Uh, I knew nothing about the plot, and it took me on a ride. It, it's genuinely fantastic. I had such a good time watching it. And, uh, yeah, everyone, sh everyone should go see this movie. And I hope that it won't because that's not how it works. 
Uh, I hope the Oscars kind of will nominate a foreign language film for Best Picture again this year, and it'll be that. Best Picture? It won Palm Door at Con. See, I thought uh, it won Palm Door at Con. I think, uh, I thought it's like a horror movie? Horror movie? It sounds like a horror movie. You can't, you can't call a movie Parasite and it, it not be horror. Wikipedia listed as a black comedy thriller. Oh, boy. That's what I would call it. I wouldn't say it's a horror. I'm, it sounds like it's scary. It's me. messed. It's not scary. It's messed up, but mm. it's not scary. Not that it was, you know, not that it's I quite funny. It, it's just like, um, respectfully. Yeah. When, uh, when Aaron and Cassie <laughs> like are really? like, oh, this is a great movie. I'm like, ah, that's probably. fair. No, I would, I wouldn't classify it as, <laughs> I did not find it scary. I definitely found it intense and messed up. I bet but. somebody wakes up covered in blood at some point. That's my, like, not covered. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> that's my, and they're lovely people <laughs> and they have excellent taste. That's, that's what I, when I, when I think of and I hear Parasite and then I see the reviews from the three of you, I go, ah, something, there's a horrible moment. Oh yeah. 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 Unquestionably. But it's funny. <laughs> okay. Cool. Anyway, Match of the week. Uh, it's my song. It's Shibata versus Ishii from the 2013 G1 Climax Day 4. 2013? Just, yeah. It's just two guys kicking the ember loving piss of each other. It's always fun. You love to see that. Shibata loves to just kick people and get kicked in the head. That's just his thing. Uh, you got to love Shibata. You simply must. Um, not a whole else. They're just two guys that love to slap and hit and kick. And that's what they do for like 25 minutes. It sounds actually sounds pretty entertaining. I won't lie. As a non wrestling fan, that that is what I want to see in a wrestling match. It's too bad that uh, Shibata had like a brain hemorrhage because he likes to do real headbutts too much. Oh yeah, that's a shame. I will say that kind of such as life. As a non wrestling fan, it's the goofy non fight stuff that turns me off. Even though I know that's part of the of whole course. show, of course. But like that kind of match, it's like yeah, I'll watch that. Just two hosses slapping the shit out of each other. Yeah, I love yeah. that shit. That's exactly what it is for sure. Um, Give me USC. That's not real. Is basically what I want, and not. UFC. Boy, is Katsuyori Shibata the guy for you. You you spend time worrying that he's going to be seriously injured. And then one day he was. That's fair. You only do it so much. I think I feel like I watch uh, certain action movies the same way. Like when you can tell it's like not CGI yes. stunts. You're like, oh, that person might have actually hurt themselves. Love that. Okay. And uh, does this freak you out? I feel like it's supposed to be my turn. But it I is. Didn't. But I, it's my birthday, so I didn't want to do it. That's fair. So I did. Uh, all right. What was the last? What was the bugs and the bugs was last. fucking coffee? This is a little different. Melissa did not like that one. <laughs> yeah, no one seemed to like that one. But also, everyone was like, "Also, what am I going to do?" Right. I think you and I had the only logical answer to that: to feel like, "Oh, that sucks." Yeah, it absolutely sucks. But like, whatever. How much can I do? I'm. Are we not going to drink coffee, folks? I already have. Exactly. All right. This is an article from a website called Cool Material that I've never heard of. This was <laughs> sent to me by friend of the show Andrew Wilson. Hello, Wilson. Once again, uh, the headline. Is, no, I'm not going to do the headline. I'm just going to read the article. Yes. $20,000 in your pocket mm-hmm. if you finish. To date, no one has finished. Mm. And it's not some quick walkthrough where you can close your eyes through most of it while holding hands with your friend. This one is eight to ten hours long. Nope. And you go solo. Sans friends, sans hope, sans adult diaper. The brainchild of ex-Navy man Russ McCamey. The manor has been dubbed the most frightening haunted house ever made. Rather than just scare you with fake blood and haunting makeup, visitors go through what can only be characterized as hours of extreme fear. You must read and sign a 40-page waiver, go through a Facebook screening, and get a rigorous athlete's physical to see if your heart and mind can handle it. The perception of experiencing a near-drowning, being fed undesirable things, Getting doused in spiders and roaches and all manner of fear-inducing situations has led to 911 calls and lawsuits. But McCamey films all of it, evidence that perception and reality aren't always the same thing. He asked for some dog treats as the entrance fee and nothing more. The current waiting list amounts to 27,000 people. Holy jeez. Does this experience freak you out and would you do it? So it's like a haunted house, except it's like tor- it's torture. You're tortured. It's a torture house. Yeah. Would I would I pay dog treats to be tortured for ten hours? Yes. Absolutely not. <laughs> not you're not even curious. Like this the- psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I think the idea that he films and then you get to see that it's not actually that scary is an interesting little social experiment. I love that at the end. He's like, oh yeah, by the way, you're a fucking idiot. That's great. <laughs> That's what I needed. <laughs> well, P.S. You're stupid as shit for coming here. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for the. Dog treats, or whatever. Yeah, no, you're not. So you're not into. No, it. you're not even vaguely curious. I, I hate to get on my. I'm 34 years old already. Like, like that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soapbox, but like, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> I don't need everything is worse than it was. 
But what if it gives you a new lease on life and everything's better than it? Not going to happen. No? I've, you're not, you're I not. have no room for new leases. See, the thing that interests me about it is like Ugh. the knowledge that I'm that it's part of a haunted house. Don't like haunted house. Like I think I don't either, but like I feel like yes, I'd be obviously horrified and extremely uncomfortable, no question. Near drowning? Just, like what? I just, I f- I'm curious about whether the psychological aspect of knowing that it's all sort of a haunted house and you're not going to die would cut any of it. Everybody else seems to not be handling it very well. That's what I'm curious about. I'm not strong enough in my convictions to Oh, I, I'm also saying all this like, oh, I'd do this never great. There's no fucking way I'd do this. 8 to 10 hours. That's just a, curious. That's, that's the th- that's the thing. If it was like two hours, maybe eight, I'm not. I don't spend eighteen hours doing anything. It's a long time. Uh, and the you said Navy SEAL, ex Navy SEAL, yeah, yeah, that, that makes it worse for me. Yeah, for sure. Not, not trusting any. No offense to any military that are listening to this. But if you uh, are a Navy SEAL and you retired, it just says ex Navy. It doesn't know, right. necessarily a Navy SEAL. If you're formerly in the if you're formerly in the Navy and then you're like, what am I going to do after being in the Navy? Like, I think I'll torture people for just for like. My own entertainment. Also tells me like maybe you did that in real life. And I'll film myself torturing people mm. and then laugh about it with them. Yeah, no, thank you. Good thing is there's no evidence of military people enjoying, all, enjoying that kind of thing. It's all good, baby. Uh, no, thank you. That's a that's a hard pass on my end. That's fair. 20, I, guess, you, I guess that's not really does this freak what, you out. You get, more 20, like you, get, you get 20K if you complete it? Yes. Somebody had to complete it. Nobody's completed it. According to this article, that's a paragraph long on a website I've never heard of. No one has completed it. Sounds like he just like waterboards you. <laughs> just like, please stop. This is actual torture. Right. Yeah. This yeah. isn't a haunted house. You're torturing me. Yeah, I think that's the idea. But you get twenty thousand dollars for ten hours. That's not what a haunted house is. A haunted house is like psych like oh a, a ghost popped out. Yeah. Or there's a guy just like a wolf around the corner. Isn't there a Nathan for you where he creates the scary haunted house by making someone think they're gonna die but tells them they have a disease and then there's like gotcha. That's what this feels like. <sighs> I don't like it. Twenty thousand dollars for ten hours work though. That part, yeah. If I was like, you know, if 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 we were in a spot where we really needed money, are I could, we not I could, always I could, in that spot? But like, really needed oh, money. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like I wish they paid us for the podcast. Like, yeah, really fair, needed fair, fair. money, which they do. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. I don't like it. It freaks me out even thinking about it. Yeah, people that love to be scared. I don't. I don't understand. I I like I like to be put on edge for like. 20 minutes in a movie and then it's over and that's fine yeah because like it's true that you a, walk around on that's edge? a good point like, I, I think about like the, my anxiety yeah just like those 12 minutes where i'm feeling extremely anxious are a nightmare what's that like what's that for i don't know if i talked on the show have i talked about my movie theater anxiety on this show before no but please i find movie, we're here movie theaters scare the fuck out of me hmm. uh like the first 20 minutes of any movie i go to i am in a like tense bundle of fear basically uh i don't know why or how it started uh but it just uh has always been the batman shooting no it started before <laughs> that and when that happened i was like see <laughs> i'm right to be weird um but like the first 20 minutes of any movie were just are just night went to see midsummer a few months ago and the sure f- that's the whole point but the first 20 minutes of that movie are like intentionally anxiety and claustrophobic inducing and i just wanted to leap out of my skin so the idea of doing that for eight hours maybe does give There's me no pause. chance he just beats the shit out of you from what i can tell kind <laughs> of sounds that way yeah <laughs> feeds you shit yeah what like feeds you unlike undesirable unco- things what a weird way to put that it's very v- it's too vague for me i would like to know Hungry? How about some undesirable things? Mm? <laughs> Pretty twisted. No, thank you. We move on. Before the mailbag, I'd like to let you know, if you're listening to this, it's your last chance to get the Boba Shet tea, by the way. Oh, yeah. October's over in, like, tomorrow. It disappears into the vault November 1st. It's a Casey Bannerman design. If we haven't noticed, Casey Bannerman makes great shit. Casey Bannerman's good. Show your love for sports film. Show your love for Star Wars. Good at things. Show your love for Boba Shet. Sportsfilm.ca. Click on Merch. I'll put the show in there. That isn't your thing. Lots of other stuff. We get the new Sag shirt that inspired by Zeus himself. That's me. The Spurs felt hoodie, which, uh, you know, not always great. Spurs. They're bad. But uh, yeah, they might be bad. All the old stuff <clears throat> is on sale. Shout out to Darwin, who bought an old, not old, he bought an on sale logo tee the other night. Shout out Darwin. It is kind of an old shirt, I guess. Sportsfall.ca. Click on merch. And wait, we got to, it's almost November. We got a November shirt. Yeah, can't wait. Don't want to tell you what it is, but let's just say, buds all day. Ooh, what a tease. Could be anything. What can it be about? The least, probably. Uh, okay, <laughs> mailbag time. Uh, let's do it. 
Let's start with, we'll start, we'll start it off easy. How about that? Let's do it. I love easy. Uh, how much time do you wait before coffee number two? I back to back him. It depends on the day. Sometimes I don't do coffee number two because I don't handle coffee caffeine very well. Yeah, we're different people. Today, I, today it was. Two coffees is one coffee for me. That's fair. Today it was uh, about 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, who is the G goat, the greatest goat of all time in sports? Who's the greatest, greatest of all time? It's Muhammad Ali. Serena? Ooh, yeah. Never mind, Serena. I'm going to say Ali. It's it's Serena or Federer, I think. Yeah. It's got to be an individual sport person. Yeah. I think it's Serena. I think so, too. Because it was about, it was like, I think when you get into, like, who's the greatest phrase of all time, it has to be, there also has to be a little bit of off-court impact. Yes, I agree. And Which, being, like, Ali absolutely, yes. unquestionably. And being a black woman from Compton in tennis and being the greatest of all time by a long shot. Yeah, by so much. One, She won a tournament, well, three months pregnant. I think three. That, that should probably qualify her as, I don't know a lot about pregnancy, but I feel like that's tough. Serena's a great answer. In a previous episode. I would hear Tiger as well, but I don't think so. I don't think so either. I would have said that for a little bit. Too long, too long a sustained time of not yeah. being the guy. Uh, another one. In a previous episode, we talk, you talked about how much you hate cereal. See, okay, so I saw this question. I don't think I ever said I hate it. I just don't eat it for breakfast. Cereal's a nice treat. It's just not breakfast. You food. said you would rather eat a Caesar salad for breakfast. That's still true. Is that, that the question is, is that still true? Or is there something even weirder you would rather have for breakfast instead of cereal? Uh, any non breakfast food. Blake is also a non breakfast guy. I remember correctly. I lo- no. So, here, so here's the thing. I love breakfast. You give me eggs and toast. I'm right. all for it. I'll have that for lunch, breakfast, dinner. I don't care, but I'm just not a big, like non eggs. I like different kinds of creation of eggs. Like I'll eat a huevos rancheros for breakfast mm. or, uh, eggs benedict whatever like that's that kind of breakfast food i'm here for but like with sweet breakfast or cereal i don't have time for that bullshit what am i i'm not a child anymore okay yeah any lunch or dinner food i would prefer for breakfast than cereal i don't think i had cereal for breakfast very often either i'll, I'll toast or i'll have eggs and, and yeah. bacon yeah that's what a breakfast is what combination of cheeses Ooh. Makes the breast, be, the breast, <laughs> <laughs> the best grilled cheese. Ooh. People say Gruyere. When you see like a chef making yeah, cheese, it's they, always Gruyere. they do Gruyere on sourdough. Here's my hot take about Gruyere. Hit me. It only works well when mixed with other melted cheeses. Right. I feel like it's too much of a bite for me on its own. Mm. So I, if you want to like have a, and I think that's the thing with like chef grilled cheese, they mix it with like two other cheeses and Correct. it's great. Um. I mean, it's hard to beat just like a classic cheddar. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to be we're too sim- simple. I don't want to be simple men. about it. We're simple men. Brie is also really good for grilled cheese. Mm. But it, but again, that I feel like it has to be with other stuff. Not, like necessarily, other, not necessarily other cheese, mm-hmm. but like another topping. Like, Yeah, with yeah. Then it becomes a melt. I'm, I'm one of those people. Yeah, you're right. I do love, I love a melt. Once though. you put something else other than cheese in there, it's not a grilled cheese. It's a melt. That's true. So here's my question about melts. Like, versus, cheese, like, like cheese and bacon, it's a melt. But does a melt necessitate it being open faced? No. No. Okay. Here's a funny one. That, that'll be a quick answer. I'm going to we can get them all. Will sports fail? Will we lose sports fail if you don't stick to sports? The opposite is more likely. Yeah. I mean, have you ever listened to the show? If we talk about sports more. People are like, all right, man. I will say nobody's coming in for this. I will say, fuck those guys who are trying to screw Deadspin. Yeah. I'm a big. I I know it's like not fashionable to be fans of things anymore. There are sports writers. Sure. I'm a big Deadspin fan. I read it every day. I thought it was, I think it's, I thought it was funny just because like I'm, that yesterday became like a no, I love Deadspin the most competition. Right. It was no, I, I go there three times a day. I go there four <laughs> times a day. I listen, I, re, I read David J. Roth. That's about it. I read Roth. I read McGarry. I like, I read it. It's my like. Does brow- McGarry even read it right there anymore? He does the mailbag every week. It's very interesting. Ah, uh, the little He writes both farts and shit and sometimes food. I will say though, uh, McGarry's fun bag is usually what I read when I can't fall asleep. Okay. And I couldn't fall asleep last night, and there was nothing to read. Uh, so I like that. I like David J. Roth on Trump. I think it's he's the only he is the only person who should be allowed to write about Donald Trump. Uh, and the Mets, it's what Mets or Trump. Yes, yeah, he's great. I, David J. Roth is amazing. Not that I, you know, not that I don't love Deadspin. I do. I will. I like, would. I would say I would. I get ninety percent of my sports news from Deadspin. You're not alone. You're not alone. Um. So yeah, solidarity with them. Fuck the billionaire idiots who are ruining the internet. I got really depressed last night. I'm not going to lie. Let's hear it. Uh, about the Deadspin thing leading into other things. But I saw someone tweet. I think it was Molly Lambert had a tweet that like uh, there and it's over. 
Now right. like we had it and now it's been taken over by corporate billionaires who are just right. turning into everything else. And I think that's kind of true. Well, it was, it was bound to happen. It was for sure. But that's kind of the point. It was bound to happen because we live in this stupid fucking capitalistic society. Right. And I found it really depressing that like all of the brilliant talent. And I mean, yes, the internet is home to tons of garbage and has arguably done more harm than good. But I also think it's done a ton of good. Right. And we've sort of, I think we're losing the, we're, we're losing the good faster than we're getting it. You know what I mean? The kids will figure it out. I hope so. But you're in your thirties. It doesn't matter. I know. Oh no, I'm, I can't do anything, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I hope the kids can figure it out. I hope it's not like what we talked about the NBA and the Hong Kong China thing where like you can't, if you're in such a capitalist billionaire mm-hmm. system, that's hard to really be able allowed or able to do anything. Right. I hope the kids can figure that out. Right. Because my point to you would be, I mean, you were in the biz for a little bit. Yeah. And you remember looking around and being like, well, how is this going to make any money? Yeah. Constantly every day. Well, you had to know that the answer to how is it going to make any money is, is shitty people. Yes, that's true. That's how things make money. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, I, I, I know that's not different than what you're saying. No, but you're right. You're absolutely you correct. You sort of had to see this coming. Like all the, content, I think it happened stronger than I expected. Like all the content you like, even if it's not like, um, I don't think I expect it to be such a like active attempt to shut it down. I see. Yeah, that's, I think I checked. That's it get, bullshit. I attempted to get worse. Yeah, for sure. But I don't think I expected to be like, Oh, Hey, we're, you're not allowed to do this. Fuck you now. Yeah. Um, you know, without getting too inside baseball, but like anything you, you enjoy the, the, next level reason that it exists is to get you to sign up for something or buy for something. sure hundred percent like the reason that the no athletic, one does anything for yeah, free yeah the reason the athletic is so high end is because they're trying to get you to subscribe to the athletic absolutely absolutely unquestionably but yeah. like anyway also all the fucking like alt-right barstool chuds who are all like oh it's so good they're shutting down when are you you're always crying about censorship and free speech yeah it's almost like you're a bunch of fucking idiots almost Fuck. makes me so mad uh your best halloween costume childhood or adult I don't really, so I'm not a Halloween guy. Not a Halloween guy. Every day in your life is Halloween. Am I right? Hey. hey, hey. Yeah, I, I don't put a ton of effort into I don't, I don't costumes. Know, I'm a, a, a especially good. I was a baseball player like five times. I was Ralph Wiggum four years running. I just wrote Florida on a piece of paper and stuck it on my chest. This all, this all sounds familiar. Yeah, I think I've told you this before. I mean, two of them were at the score, so you probably saw Yeah, it. we're not Halloween guys. No. I was Marty McFly. Day after my birthday, so I just don't care. That's fair. I was Marty McFly once at university. That was probably the most effort I put into it in a costume. Which, like, it's just clothes. Yeah, I'm sure as a kid I put some... I think I was Pat Borders for two years. Yeah, I, I, had like a, I had, like, a full Blue Jays. Yeah. Top and tails. Uh, do you like celebrating your birthday, or does it just remind you of mortality? Um, I'm going to go with neither of these. I, like, I, I don't really care that I'm... My birthday today? Yeah. But not because I'm like, oh... I'm, I'm old and dying, like, yeah. I just don't care. I'm... It's Wednesday. I'm, not, I'm sort of back and forth. I usually don't care. I like celebrating because I like going for dinner and like hanging out with my friends. But, uh, the only, I was 31. Actually, I found way weirder than 30. Right. Everyone's like, th- you turn 30 and everything. So you mortality, but 30, I didn't even react to 31. For some reason, I was just like, man, I'm 31 now. I was saying, uh, before the show, it's like 34. It's like, I've never heard anybody happy to be 34. <laughs> you never hear of anybody being like, oh, 34, great age. 34, just like, oh, yeah, that's how we'll Yeah. Go. I feel like getting into my 30s sort of hit me a little bit. I'm over it now. It lasted like a day. Yeah. But I will say a thing that I'm noticing now that I'm in my 30s that is sort of freaking me out. It's not even a mortality thing. It's that you kind of touched on it a little bit about how Marcus Gasol is 34 years old. That's right. To me, it's not even athletes. To me, it's I think about people in professions that when I was younger right. were like, oh, you're old. I think about teachers. I think about doctors. Yes. I think about nurses, like professionals. And now you see them like, oh, you're younger than me. Of course. That that kind of is like, oh. Well, it's because. Well, I know. I know. It's no offense. We slacked off for like 10 years. Oh, I'm not. I'm not their, <laughs> no, no. It's not their accomplishments <laughs> that freak me out. Right. It's that they're fully formed in their roles. Yeah. In their professions. They're professionals. And that they're my age. Right. Not Again, it's not a. It's a path. No, it's not even. I think that it's more impressive or that I wish I was that or that I feel unsuccessful i mean obviously that's all true but that's not no more about, than not about that yeah. yeah exactly it's just the idea that that's the age i am now mm-hmm. which is like oh fuck yep 34 getting old that's the facts yeah ankles just hurt all the time my back man yeah uh yeah so i'm 34 uh doesn't i'm not like oh i'm gonna die i know i'm gonna die it's, we all know that's right. reality yeah um doesn't bother me but i also like 
I think it would be ridiculous if I was like, we've got to have a huge party. I'm turning 34. Fives and tens. It's even then like, yeah, I mean, I don't expect next year to be like, oh, 35. Let's blow we it did up. something for your 30th. We did. We did. Yeah, we, we did. Where else we, we go? Working, right? Yeah, that was the last big party. Yeah. Um, like the drinks we had on Friday was your. Yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my birthday going up. That's fair. I mean, like I didn't say it was that you did. Did I? You said it was like this might as well be right. It wasn't like for your birthday, though. Like no yeah. one was like, let's celebrate his birthday. I didn't know it was till we got there. It sat down. That's how I got Blake to come out and said we're having not typically <laughs> birthday birthday drinks. Uh, greatest game seven you ever witnessed. That's a good question. Ooh, there's. I mean, I mean, I guess it's Raptors Sixers. Yeah, I don't know how you could possibly beat that for a finale. That game had everything, and the game itself was amazing. Recently like, biased, but yeah, Raptors Sixers. Sh- shot aside, that game was dope. It's an all-timer. It's also like, what other Toronto Game 7 memories do we have? The Leafs losing a bunch? Yeah. Like, I don't know, Gilmore scoring? I think I was five. I think it's Raptors Sixers. I think it has to be. I think it does. I think you're right. I'm trying to think of... No. I mean, that's the, that's the Toronto side of it. You nailed it. That's the Toronto side of it. I'm trying to think of if there's any other Game 7s that aren't... I'm sure there's been plenty. Toronto that I'm, that I'm like, oh, wow. I'm sure but I don't care as much. There's some World Series ones, but yeah. Raptors Sixers... With the way it built and the way it ended, yeah. With all that came after it and all that came before, even just how crazy that series. The was. last like seven minutes of the fourth quarter. I was rethinking. I've, I've been reevaluating a lot of stuff. Um, you forget how. Remember the Embiid like doing the airplane shit. Yeah. Oh you know, yeah. I forget how that was like. Oh shit. I forget how much that was like, oh, my God, I, they figured it out. We're I fucked. tweeted several times after that game being like the Raptors will never win anything. They're yeah. Fuck. This is a franchise that is doomed to never win anything because they had that. And then they had the Ben Simmons game. And I was like, oh, that's it. Yeah. S- Simmons is going and Embiid's going. Kawhi hits that doesn't hit that three in game four. Who knows? Mercy. Uh, it, does, it also feels like that whole thing never happened in a weird way. Yeah. Which I think it was may, so quick. Maybe that's just what happens when your team wins a title. I don't know because it's never happened before in terms of the big four. But I don't know. That's. Uh, Kramer asks us, what's the dumbest thing you're good at that you're most proud of? I mean, podcasting. Podcasting. <laughs> <Not good. 100%. laughs> you have to be good at it. Oh. Oh. Um, um, boy, I can, dumbest thing. I, can, I can continue at age 34 to run one hell of a video game franchise. It's just like, I'm like the Patriots. I don't want to keep going back to NFL Blitz. I feel like I do that too much. I need something, <laughs> I need something other than that one the spreadsheet, 20 year old video game. The, how well I you scout. Are very, you are very good at that. It's just like, it's just, it's just sustained winning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could turn it over to the computer and it would just be like, oh, we win two more titles because you weren't even involved. Something extremely dumb. I'm very good at. I don't like how hard <laughs> to think about this question. Um, yeah, I don't know. OK, I don't I don't want to dead air this for yeah. the next three minutes. Uh, Woodley with a question that it's 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 a little too absolute for my taste. Should pie be the standard birthday dessert instead of cake? Jake, I know you don't like dessert in the first place. It's no good. It's not that I don't like it. I just think it's of, a waste of yeah. space in your belly. Uh, my answer to that is like the birthday should dessert should be whatever the birthday person's favorite dessert is. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I mean, it's your birthday. That's the whole point. Would I prefer pie? Yes. Yeah. Is the question, should everyone have to have pie? Absolutely it's absurd. not. It's absurd. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but in terms of like the standard bearer for society, pie should overtake cakes. It's better. Here's a weird one. Okay. Best type of pants, not including sweatpants. This type of pants. What even is that? What does that mean? Uniqlo. The Uniqlo yeah, ones. Uniqlo. That, <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. They yeah, fit like sweatpants, but they're jeans. Yeah. Easies or whatever? They're for fatties. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, what, those are the Easies, I think? They're yeah. Called? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're the best. They're for thin fatties. <laughs> uh, worst birthday party for another person you ever attended? Jenkins. That is a mean question. <laughs> it's the kind of thing a 22 year old asks you. Yeah. Me. Be mean, they, be mean to somebody who might be listening. She's thinking of a specific moment. Absolutely. And hoping that we can relate. One of her close friends, I bet. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I really have one other than like the person got too drunk and threw up a bunch. Yeah, I don't want it. That's I don't want to be mean to somebody who might be listening. I don't know. I don't I don't have a person in mind, but like no. there's a good chance it's a friend of mine. Right? I don't go to people who aren't my friend birthdays. That's the thing. And like I also don't really go like once you hit a certain age, birthdays as we were saying, birthdays stop being kind of a thing. So like the worst thing to think of is like in university someone drank too much and got really sick. So probably mine, frankly. That's the qualifier. I mean, probably, yeah. probably me at nineteen. Yeah, me at twenty. I wasn't even really involved. Oh in the yeah, party. no, it's definitely me at twenty. We, my friend threw me a kegger, chugged rum to impress some girls, and puked while everybody else went out on my nineteenth birthday. I used in uh, when I was going back to food takes. When I was nineteen, uh, I was transitioning into being a vegetarian. 
Nice. And one of the things I was like, this is halfway there. That I got really into that summer was uh, Subway tuna subs. Ugh, that's yeah. fucking awful. Correct. Uh, the last time I ate one. A lot of Subway tuna in the last two years of my life. Really? You're not the first person to bring it up. Go on. The last time I ate one was the night of my 20th birthday when we had a kegger and I drank so much that I threw up in my friend's kitchen sink. Yep. Threw up a Subway tuna sub. That sounds awful. That taste yep. of it coming back up. Never had another one in my life. I have not eaten Subway in like three years. I don't hate Subway. It's never my go-to. Like yeah. there's so many other options in the city that like when I was in university, I definitely ate a ton of it because I was one across the street from my house. But of course. It's not in, now that I'm an adult and also live in Toronto, there's no reason for me to ever That's right. go to Subway. I sort of had like a last time I ate it, I was like, I don't need to do what am I doing? I don't, yeah. need, I don't need to do this. I can get a, a better sandwich literally anywhere. I don't need to do this myself, yeah. is what I thought to myself. Uh what's the office equivalent of carrying your bat to first base? We saw them that last night. Is that like a, a fuck you or a faux pas? Like how are we? How are we? I think it's a fuck you. It's a fuck you. Uh, two two guys yesterday hit a home run and then carried their bat all the way to first. Okay. Bregman did it, and then Juan Soto did it to, to say fuck you to Bregman. Hmm. It was pretty cool. Um, I think stinky I, food. Yeah, maybe maybe the fish. I think it might be like staying on your phone during a meeting. That's just that's more like where you're just like yeah, that's right. I don't really give a shit. I guess pisses you off. I don't care. But is that intentionally to piss someone off or is that just you're a dick on your phone? Well, so, uh, so the bat flip sort of intentionally. The second one was the bat. Carrying. No, that's what I'm saying. If, but yeah. being on a phone in the meeting, I feel like that's not necessarily like. We're just like, I'm the man. For spite. It's just like, I don't care. Right. It's tough. There aren't a lot. You know, not everything has an office equivalent. It has to be because it has to be one of those things that is simultaneously you're not thinking about it at all, but also you're doing it entirely on purpose. Kicking somebody out of the meeting room. That's pretty good. That's that's a big that's the big hot thing in, in I've worked in like one office my yeah. entire life. I've never had I've, really I've only had one real real job and it was terrible at it. Yeah, I <laughs> was an actor from five to nine. All my, no jobs, all my jobs have been uh, talk about sports. Yep. My office jobs have also been office job has also been talking about sports. Last one. What's your poorly informed NFL half season prediction? Oh, my fantasy team sucks. That's mm. my half season prediction. That's tough. That's real tough. A lot of injuries and some couple not great trades on my part. It happens. Yeah. Um, what's my half season prediction? I'd be lying if I said I'd watch more than twenty seconds of an NFL auction. <sighs> yeah. Um, Maybe that's why my fantasy team sucks. Not really football guys. No. I I, I check uh, Boone's Twitter every now and then to see if I should do yeah, some, of do something on fantasy, but that's about it. Uh, I don't know. Most of the uh, players are bad people. Maybe. Um, Fuck the Patriots. I when the Niners are eight. No, I didn't Niners know that. Are, yeah, Niners are very good. I hope they're good. My prediction down the stretch. Uh, here's one. I'll do. I'll give you a hot take. All right. The Patriots will not make the Super Bowl. Ooh, who do you think they're losing to? I don't know. Just do not. All right. I hope that's true. Although here's the here's my thing. They haven't really played anybody. As a non football fan mm-hmm. who does watch the Super Bowl every year, like most people who watch the Super Bowl, I think naturally. As much as I hate the Patriots and hate everything about them, everything surrounding them and their fans, their organization, their players, most of them, I do like they give me something to root against when I watch the Super Bowl because I don't like watching a sporting event that I don't care about. So I kind of, I always half hope they do make the Super Bowl just so I can be like, fuck you, I hope you lose. Mm. Because like, I know last year everyone's all like, oh, Chiefs Rams would be amazing. And like, maybe, but like, I don't care. Like, who cares who wins that Super Bowl? Certainly not me. I like being able to ruin it. I guess the downside of that is then the Patriots always win when they make it. So Yeah, um, they're not coming to the Super Bowl. They're going to lose to somebody. They haven't played anybody. They haven't had a real test. I like it. My prediction is that the Buffalo Bills will make the playoffs. Yeah. And they might be the ones to beat the Patriots. Okay. Yeah, there it is. That's what I'm going to say. We did it. There's my take of my informed football take. Bills beat Patriots in the playoffs. So I don't even know if they can play each other. Let's close it out. Let's, let's talk about whether we are sad or not sad after... This. All right. One last thing to do, and that is to wonder whether we are sad or not sad. But first, congrats to Baby Frame, who wins this week's the last version of the winner to write a review to get a Boba Shet tea. With a charming, not sad. What freaks me out more than pineapple that eats you back? 
when I finish this week's pod and have to wait a full week for another. Good job, gents. Love the sports podcast about nothing. Leave us ratings. Leave us reviews. We're launching the next win free shit contest on next week's podcast. Who knows what the shirt will be? I sure don't. I don't think Clay does either, frankly. No, but man, Clay's coffee is something else. It's good stuff. He really... It's the, it's the stuff you love to see. He's a wonderful boy. Uh, he's excited. <laughs> It's good. Not a someone, great job. No, someone should be excited about the show. Not a great job of writing in our voice, but no, but you know, you know, a little too uh, genuine excitement. And again, uh, <laughs> as our last week with, with Blood Brothers, the delicious Paradise Lost, big time apricot aroma, tart and very juicy. Was, I, was, I like the apricot one more than the guava one. It was say. very good. Uh, Blood Brothers Bottle Shop, 165 Geary Avenue, seven days a week from noon. 11 p.m. If you can't make it out to the shop, you can have it delivered to your door, which is ridiculous. Online bottle shop, bloodbrothersbrewing.com. If you want us to drink a beer on the air and talk about it from a different brewery, let us know. Because we will. Up. The thing is, we will. We've proven like, that we we're, will. we're definitely going to drink another beer. We've knocked off Left Field. We knocked off Blood Brothers. <sighs> Hope can uh, I will st- maybe like lower percentage though for you can't have a six percent at ten a.m. What's wrong with you? I'm tired man. What happened to you? I've had two coffees and I'm tired. Damn. Uh. So yeah. Bloodbrothersbrewing dot com. Thank you to Blood Brothers for four weeks of brews. They were all delicious. They were all really good. We look forward to continuing to drink you in public. Yeah. We had the shoe me. Possibly. Shoe on, yeah. On. We had too many of those. I would say not too many because they're delicious. But too the many. Shoe like, me and the entire NBA fucking talk about like six hundred NBA players. That should have been the show. We should have recorded that. We could have. We couldn't have. It would sound terrible. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but we had Blake, so it sounds like we know what we're talking about. That's too true. Um, that's it. We have just the questions of the week is whether we are sad or not sad. Jake, are you sad or not sad? I'm not sad. I'm going to continue a running theme. Hit it. Of the last few weeks. Of friends having babies. Babies. Uh, our boss? Producer? Sure. I don't know. Friend. Sean had his lovely child, Gwen. Uh, him and Di, who are two of my best friends, they have a baby now. Two of the greats. Uh, two of the greats. It's true. Uh, and it is, I will say. Sports filled baby roster. Sport, growing. Pumping growing out by in the day. Uh, I will say, uh, it is, I don't know if we, weird's the wrong word. Sure. Um, but it's nice. Let's go with nice because I don't know why that was hard to find. Nice and weird. (laughs) Uh, When you see like very close friends that you talk about things with all the time, but then you see them like so genuinely like loving a thing and like so genuinely happy. It is a very cool thing. Um, And one that I'm happy that my friends who want kids get to have. Gwyneth K, baby. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. I think it's dope. Baby. Congrats. Pretty cool. That's why Sean hasn't been here for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's why we're reading Clay's copy. Having a yeah, too true. Clay, you're doing great. We love you. Uh, <laughs> but you know, Sean, when it comes to writing copy and having a baby, that's true. Two things. Don't know why. Does. Don't know why I made that a competition. It's not. I think it should be. Sure. I'm also not sad. It's my birthday. It's birthday. Yeah, yeah. How could you be? And, and no big plans for. I mean, it, people are, but not me. I guess no big plans for birthdays. Underratedly fun. Yeah, Melissa works nights. I work nights. I'm going to do the same thing I do every week, Wednesday, which yeah. is record three podcasts. Hey, that's not a bad way to spend a day. I've had a lot worse birthdays than to just continue on with my life <laughs> uh, doing things I like to do for money. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, I mean, that, that at the risk of that just being it. I mean, we went long on everything else. We might as well short on the thing. You know, that I don't have, uh, as I said, it, it, it does. It's not cause for reflection. I, I find enough cause for reflection in my everyday life anyway. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, you know what's weird about me? I can think of a couple of things. T- well, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking like th- times we get like reflective, it's never been birthday for me. But it's New the- Year's Eve, always very reflective for me. Huh. Yeah. Not in the moment, but like when I go to bed, New Year's, New Year's Eve, it's always like, hmm. Yeah. Time. I think anybody who listens to this show knows that I am good at finding anniversaries of things anyway. Yes, that's To reflect true. upon. My birthday is not one of them. Yeah. I think that's fair. I, yeah. Birthdays are just kind of... Like old old boomers, yeah, boomers love to say like, oh, you f- how does it feel to be? It's like it's exactly the same. Exactly as same. Yesterday, yeah. oh, the answer is always that because yeah, odds my, every year, every year it's the same as it was the day before. I have anniversaries of other things that make me think, oh, I can I've come so far from this. But my birthday is always just like a year ago. I was working uh, a night shift. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. Not that big a deal. It just yeah. isn't, uh, and it doesn't make me sad that I don't care. No, it's just what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna go have lunch. Happy birthday, anyway, though. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you to everybody. No, I've done said, my part. Happy birthday to me. 
even though I probably didn't say happy birthday to them on their birthday. No, I don't really do that anymore. Except to like people I actually see and I'm close with. If you're, at, if you're at the birthday party or you're hanging out on your birthday, yeah, sure. Like someone that I talk, like people I talk to every day, I'll wish them a happy birthday. But I don't know why I'm grandstanding. It's it's nice. It's a nice thing to do. It is. <laughs> It cool. It's cool that people are nice. It was fun when I was younger and Facebook was still a thing people used that are my age and you would get all the notifications being like, happy birthday. I assume that some of that's happening, but I like, and this but is that's not, the thing. Who's, no, who checks? That's, that's what I mean. This is not one of those things where I'm trying to like be a thing. I just like, I just don't check Facebook. No, never. There's nothing on there. Al- almost me. never. There's nothing on there for me anymore. You know, you know what there is on me for Facebook? What? Is invites to comedy shows that I have no <laughs> intention on going to. I know, I know. That's not what you want to do for your birthday? I know 350 comics, all of them who I've not seen in four years. Of course. All of them are certain that I want to come to the Comedy Bar Cabaret space. You don't. Weird. I feel like you should support the industry. Uh, yeah. Thank you for supporting live comedy. Um, from what, although from what I heard from the status the next day is the crowd was great and everybody killed. So congratulations to you guys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and that, uh, you know, the lineup of people that are literally amazing. Doing You'll never see a better line. Two shows a night every night with the exact same five people. Uh, unreal. Sick. The booming lineup. scene. Sick it's bo- lineup. It's a booming scene. Netflix is <laughs> here They're giving us everyone a special. No need to be mean to my former peers and friends. Yeah, but I don't know why I'm still in an industry that's absolutely the same thing. And I'm a dick. Listen, open, but you see, open for the American comic you let, to see and if, then we'll talk. <laughs> Oh, uh, but like if you why get, did I ever think if, I could make it? if you get successful, hire me, of course, yeah, obviously, obviously is the subtext of all this. Obviously, um, you were funny. You were good. Yeah, I, I understand not having like the desire to do this for the rest of your life, but power to people who do. I was uh, I, I, we'll talk about it. We're here. I have nothing else to do. I was exactly funny enough to recognize uh, how much funny I would have to be to make it even sort of in my career. That's fair. I get that. I was ne- and, I, and I knew I'm, I'm never going to move to L.A. or New York. I'm not going to yeah. do that. So my cap, my ceiling, my ceiling it's like a JFL is guy who gets to go to like fucking Sudbury, right? Yeah. That was my, like my ceiling is I get to go to do Calgary yuck yucks. That's fair. My ceiling was, uh, still having a kitchen job three days a week, <laughs> which is, and, and again, I don't want to get that off as like, oh, that's, well, there's no shame. There's in no that. shame but, in that. You have to choose, you have to choose to want to yes. do that. You also get the freedom to your job is to, at, at night you turn into fucking Superman, right? It feels great. Yeah. But also, and this is the other thing. Like, I also, I also do want to say, it does sound like like absolutely power to anyone who actually totally. does this. It's I'm unbelievable. Not, it's fun to make fun of, but it's also like so. It's impressive and it's admirable, and absolutely. you this should is, keep this doing. This is a it. hack who couldn't do it. Yeah. telling you this. It's unbelievable that you get to do that, and that is the people. I, it, the other part of it that always was never lost on me, right? Is I'm this shitty open micer that's going out and grinding, and like the pro that you would aspire to be. Is also at that open mic, right? Like right. you never leave that. <laughs> yeah, maybe ten people ever leave that. But like you, you Dave Merhaj, who who does right. Netflix specials and he's on a Hulu original. Like he was doing open mics with me, like recently when I was doing. I was like, man, <laughs> years ago. It's like, man, you're successful. You have to continue doing it. Yeah, and you'll see people that you think are the best comics in the country, and like you still bomb a percentage of the time. It's just the game. Yeah, that's true. It's like any work day. You see, sometimes you have bad days at work. It's and, just your work day like, is on stage in front of people. I, I see. I feel that a lot when I look at like creative people. Totally. And like acting is a little different because it is slightly reliant on others to get you in the door kind of thing with the auditions and whatnot. Although it doesn't have to be. You can just write your own thing. But like I see people when I look at Steve and like his success and their success. Right. It's like, man, that looks great. But it seems like a lot of work. I don't. Really and do you do. Yeah, exactly right? Do okay. I want to sleep? But now, what? Where they're at now? Of course, I'd love seems, to do that. Seems amazing. Absolutely. But did I want to sleep on the floor for three years? Probably not. This was that was always the thing. Uh, the, the the perfect callery, the perfect example is like, say you love playing the drums, right? And you love drumming, and all you all you want to do is play the drums. Like yes, but are you willing to get into a van and drive to London to play drums for like twenty people for no money? And they have a shitty job just so you can play drums. Do you love drums that much or do you just like playing the drums? Yeah. I just wanted people who were funny to think I was funny. That's fair. All that being said, I'm still working a shitty Joe job while I'm trying to be an actor. So da, hire da, me da, as da, an actor. Da, da. Hey. <laughs> as I just shout on everyone who works harder than me and is more successful. because No, it's, it. it's not a shout on thing. It wasn't, no, it wasn't for me. 
No, and it's yeah, that's fair. And not like I'm like being in those no, but like being in those artistic professions is it's hard. It's a choice absolutely. and it's hard. Like I live a hundred percent paycheck to paycheck, and even then, like sometimes. And I'm just grateful to have a paycheck to live paycheck to paycheck too. But like it's it is a choice to not to be like, oh, I'm never gonna own a home. I have no financial security ever. Mm-hmm. But it's and like mine's even I'm in a better spot than a lot of people are. Yeah. And it's still like, but I get I get it, man. Power to it. I could just never do it. Yeah. Clearly. The, I think the thing I'm thinking about, the thing that I think is the hardest about doing it, other than actually doing it, is the grind when you're not doing it. Yes. And you start to not feel like it's a thing you do. Right. When it's like, oh, I've done an audition in a while. I'm just working. This like Joe job that I don't care about is just my full time job now. Yes. I, I had many of those I am a waiter moments. Yeah. My job is to be a waiter. And it's just like, hmm, <laughs> this sucks ass. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting. In all honesty, like, as we said, if you are out there doing it, fucking do it. I, envious. Everyone, sh- everyone who wants to should do it. Yeah, is the thing. It's just hard and it drains your brain and self esteem. Yeah, it took the hardest part for me was getting over the guilt of. Let's just say you said you feel guilty when you're not out doing it. Yeah, and it's like, not even, like oh, yeah. I feel fucking miserable. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Neither do I. Following your dreams, don't pay your rent, kids. Not that again, not that I'm like affluent and fucking nailing it now. No, no, no. Right? But, like that I'm, but you have a something resembling financial security, something like that. Something resembling, like that. not fully, but like more so than you would if you were working in a kitchen waiter three days. <sighs> anyway, you know what I mean. Yeah. Anyway, and we've bummed ourselves out. <laughs> well, that's that's growing up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, nowhere to go but up. Yep. Uh, right. See ya. <laughs> thank you to Clayton for your excellent, wonderful, copy. excellent copy today. Uh, congratulations to Sean and Di. Thank you to Sean for the space and the time. Thank you to Dylan for doing all the actual work in the room. Thank you to the intern in the box for somehow every week listening to this show without saying anything. Seems like a making notes. Speaking of jobs that start to weigh on you, Woo. Woof. don't say that. Listen to these two guys. Listening to it right now. No, I just mean like I know he knows. That he has to listen to us every week. That's true. It's not a surprise. And most importantly, thank you. Thank you. For listening, as always, to Sportsfeld. Sportsfeld!